Sri Lanka requested compensation for its killed and wounded citizens who served in Russian army. The Sri Lankan delegation, at a meeting with Deputy Head of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Andriy Rudenko, and Deputy Head of the Ministry of Defense, Alexander Fomin, raised the issue of paying compensation for killed and wounded citizens of the country who served under contract in the Russian army, the Sri Lankan embassy in Moscow reported. The meeting of the Sri Lankan delegation, led by the country's foreign minister, Tharaka Balasuria, and the Russian side took place on June the 26th to the 27th, according to Medusa media outlet. According to the Sri Lankan embassy, it was about 17 dead citizens of the country, about the plight of those who cannot be contacted, as well as the possibility of early termination of contracts and voluntary return of Sri Lankans from the army. The Sri Lankan delegation proposed creating a joint working committee that would meet regularly to resolve the problems of Sri Lankans serving in the Russian army. Both sides, the report says, agreed to continue negotiations on the issues under consideration. The Russian Foreign Ministry reported that at the meeting, which took place on June the 26th in Moscow, the most pressing issues on the Russian Sri Lankan agenda were discussed and mutual interest in maintaining the dynamics of bilateral dialogue was confirmed, including in the political and trade economic spheres. In May 2024, the Sri Lankan government opened an investigation into the recruitment of its citizens to fight in Ukraine. According to Sri Lankan authorities, at least 16 people were listed as dead at the time, with 37 more wounded. More than a dozen were likely being held captive. Foreign Minister Tharaka Balasuria said Sri Lankans were tricked into going to Russia with promises of good salaries and privileges, including Russian citizenship. He said the department had received 455 complaints from citizens, but he estimated the actual number could be much higher. AFP reported that advertisements posted in WhatsApp groups promised Sri Lankans a monthly salary of more than $2,100, which is 13 times the average income in the country. After this, the Sri Lankan Foreign Ministry announced that Moscow, as a result of the negotiations, agreed to no longer recruit Sri Lankans. At the same time, a preliminary agreement was reached on a meeting in June. On Sunday, rocket debris crashed onto a beach in Sevastopol in occupied Crimea, killing four people and injuring more than 150. Russia initially said it shot down a Ukrainian Atoms, but later retracted that story and accused Kiev of a deliberate attack. However, build expert Julian Ropk considers this version untenable and provides several arguments to support it. The analyst notes that the beach is 4 kilometers south of the military airfield and 3 kilometers north of the naval base. At the same time, Ukraine previously openly stated that Russian armed forces facilities in Crimea would become targets of attacks, and warned about the dangers of traveling to the peninsula. Also on the beach they found fragments of missiles from the Tor anti-aircraft missile system, which indicates the work of Russian air defense. Each Atoms contains 950 small M74 fragmentation submunitions designed to cause as much damage as possible, the analyst adds. It was they who scattered in all directions when the missile was shot down. At the same time, the footage shows that most of the fragments fall into the sea not along the beach, but across it. This means that Atoms was flying to another target, for example, to an airfield or naval base, and was shot down on approach. Only a small part of the fragments fell on the beach itself. If the Ukrainian armed forces had deliberately attacked tourists with an Atoms missile, the damage would have been incomparably greater, notes Ropk. On Sunday, June 23, Russian air defense shot down a missile over Sevastopol. Its debris fell on the beach where people were relaxing. The Russian Federation reported that as a result of the air defense, four people were killed and more than 150 were injured. After this, Russian tourists began to cancel planned trips to the peninsula. At the same time, analysts at the American Institute for the Study of War said that Russia is purposefully placing military facilities near civilian areas in the temporarily occupied Crimea.